episode of our show. Tonight's episode, I think, is going to be pretty interesting. We've got a special guest tonight, and uh, I say that about most of the guests, and I and I I, I, I always are. mean it. I always mean it. But uh, Mark Di Lorenzo is definitely a special guest because Mark and I go back a ways, and you know, I'm going to start by saying this: there's been a lot of webinars, a lot of seminars, a lot of a lot of shows, and 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 and, and analysis of races. But the analysis that, that, that he and I did, and it, and it was mostly because of, of a horse he came up with with, with, a, with a, a very strong opinion in 2016 for the Breeders' Cup, I will put up against any webinar analysis ever in the history of horse racing. And it goes back how many? Oh, over 100 years. Uh, it, was, it, it was epic. We both had huge days. And anybody that watched had a huge day. I remember... A, a, a gentleman by the name of Robert Fair, who was on Twitter, may, maybe still is, was in the webinar and he sent out a tweet saying, if you boxed all the horses that I had came up with in the Superfecta, it was about a three, all my, my four choices in each race, it was like a 300 and something dollar investment returned almost 8,000. That was nothing compared to Di Lorenzo, Di Lo as I call him, coming up with, with, with champagne room at, what was it, 35 to 1, 40 to 1? Like 33 to 1. It was the Breeders' Cup Juvenile Phillies for Peter Urton. Right. You good read that day. We singled out. Right. Right. He, he didn't just, like, like the horse or, like, you oh, know. Oh, yeah, wait, God. back, back up. Like, back up. Oh. You singled that horse? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. he singled it, bet it to win. L absolutely. It was all in on that horse at 30-something to 1. Didn't want to hear anybody else. Was afraid of nobody else. It was, it was really, it was... One of the best picks I ever saw, uh, public picks ever, in, and I've been in this game a long time. That was that was something. You're making me blush. Thank you, John. Yeah, that was, it was a great day. We, I mean, we killed them. Great that day. day. I remember yeah. that was probably the last time we did something like this, and that was uh, Champagne Room for Peter Urton was against the big time speed bias track the race before. I saw her developing, like me and you talk about a lot with the sheets. You're looking for developing horses that are peaking at the right time. It was coming in. The, the big favorite that day was the Baffert horse that was drawn in the 12th post. I'm like, this is the one horse that's going to beat me, but it's going to have to make a big run going around the turn real quick. So it was just kind of the port place that I took a stand, and that was probably one of my best days ever. But that was probably one of the last times we did something together. So it's, uh, it's good to be back. And I know you asked me on here uh, a couple days ago, and I just kind of wanted to kick this thing off. And we hadn't talked about this prior, but I kind of wanted to apologize for some stuff. I know me and you have gone back and forth on Twitter and I feel like uh, it's a, you're one of the best guys around and it proves it because a lot of people on Twitter, social media, they get into something and then they just hate that person forever, but it's okay to disagree. Sometimes people say things that, you know, they don't like or love. And I've apologized for my part, but I know we used to do a bunch of things together that kind of fell off. And uh, you having back on shows how big of a man you are. And uh, I'm glad all the success that you're having. I follow you all the time. You continue to print money. And uh, I appreciate the time to bring me on and just have, you know, a great discussion, which it always it, it, is about the sport we love. So uh, I'm excited. Yeah, no, and it, it, it's a pleasure. And, you know, that social media stuff don't mean nothing. You know, it, you know, personal interaction like this and talking to somebody face to face. Is, is, and and we've, we, we've met, we've been together and so, stuff. Much that that that's what really matters. That stuff don't don't matter. But I, I mean, I appreciate you saying it, but it, you don't even have to, man. It's I just feel it's important to say because you know, Twitter and social media platforms, like you know, you remind me a lot of my father. I say, and a lot of people, you know, they say one thing and then they they hold a grudge forever, and then somebody yeah, right. gets blocked on Twitter, and this happened. It's like, listen, we're all kind of in this together. We're all very passionate. When if you love horses, you're going to be competitive. You're Absolutely. going to have passion. And you're not going to, you know, you're not going to agree with everybody sometimes. Some people get this bad vibe feel. It's one of the negatives of it, but it's still time. I still love, like, it brings how everybody together in the sport I love. So I'm just happy for it. So, uh, you know. No, we're on the same up. page. And, and, and you know, what, what prompted me to get you back on the show, and I've wanted to for a while, is, you know, I, 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 I like what you do with Giddy Up Bets because, you, you, you know, one of the things that I've, I've respected about you since I learned your approach to the game is that, you know, you have a similar philosophy as me in that you come prepared. You know what I mean? You don't bring a knife to a gunfight. You do your homework. You study the races. You watch your replays. I've seen your war room. I know how much work you put in. And in my opinion, you can't, there's no shortcut around that. Too many people try to take a shortcut around that and come unprepared. And, and, and I think as opposed to, like you say, printing money, they're donating money over the long run. And, you know, I appreciate them for who they are because they help 
me win, but you really have no shot if that's if that's how you approach the game. It takes it's a skill game and it takes work to do it. And I know you put in the work and you've come a long way with Giddy Up Bets. I know you've had a lot of big days recently. And uh, I, I remember um, practical joke when you were high on him because of a bias that he ran against. And the next time, you know, you, you, you loved him. And, you know, similar to myself, when you love something and you have that feeling, you're not afraid to go after it, that which is sense. another essential. Yeah. It's another key to be key, key. more important than anything. It's, you know, I, uh, there's a, there's a quote that I started to kind of live by, which is a little corny at the same time, but there's a show out there called Peaky Blinders. <laughs> Tommy Shelby talks about he goes expecting a good oh. accent right now by the way <laughs> I'm not gonna I've give never heard of it so go ahead. Tommy Shelby talks about a guy that's betting horses in his you know is 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 off in his uh, betting parlor and he goes you know that guy over there he knows horses but he doesn't know racing and I feel like that's very important and that means it's like knowing racing is you know how to bet you know how to you know you have to have a strong op opinion you got to press that opinion you know you're okay to move on to the next day something I've learned a lot from you John but you know that's kind of a a little bit of a segue too, maybe into, you know, talking about Peaky Blinders. If you're not familiar, John, you know, there's a little bit of shadiness that goes on in the horse racing world. And I felt that there was a little bit of shadiness um, last Saturday. It was a big day. It was Florida Derby Day. And I just thought that there was, you know, something that needed to take a second, third look at. And I'm glad that you're having me on the show to kind of talk about that because I think it's important to to look at these things and to uh, bring attention to them when I see something like this. And, 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 and I agree. And, uh, that, you, you know, I, I thought you did a very good job, you, you know, analyzing that video of that race. And we'll talk about the race it was and what was involved. And I think you did um, a good job with the follow-up when people kind of, you know, refuted what you said and said, you know, well, you know, maybe the horse has some tendencies and you went back like I said before, with your homework and showed the prior race. And, you know, there was no indication in the prior race that the horse was reactive or shied away or was right. a horse that you right. know, didn't, didn't want to feel the stick. And uh, I, I, I think that was an important point to bring out. And it's a, you know, a race I'll let you guys talk about. And, you know, I will go on record saying that I did call, you know, it involves Irad and, and Jose Ortiz. I, I did call Irad's agent and was going to ask him to come on or ask him to arrange IRAD to come on. And he usually always gets back to me and is very professional that way. Um, but I, I tried him twice and, and, and I did not hear back from him. And, you know, it could just be Gulfstream ended ahead of Keeneland, maybe a couple yeah. of days off, shut the phone, who knows, you know. How, uh, it's the right thing to do that, Joe, though, John. I mean, it's, we'll, he'll want to get his story out here too, but. Uh, well, I didn't want, I, I didn't want to do it without at least affording him the opportunity. I, I you, right. you know, I respect the guy and, and, you know, I respect the rider and I, I, I know how tough it is to be a rider because it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it's a much tougher life than people outside the game. And even than a lot of people in the game realize. Um, yeah. it's really, really, really tough. No, and they've told us. I mean, we've had several jockeys on the show so far, and that, that yeah, and, and they're, they're incredible even, athletes. Taking it a step further, you know, I've been personal friends with with several riders over the year, years, and you know the way they have to eat, and the way they have to live, and the way they have to sleep, and their schedules are just so so rough and 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 so conducive to poor health and problems that we just take it for granted. Never mind the danger of of, of, of riding a thousand pound animal yeah. when you weigh one hundred and ten pounds. And you know everybody's fighting for the same hole. You, yeah. You know, it's it's it, it's. And except tough. and except for the top top tier, you're not making a ton of money as a jockey. That, so that, like you're you're putting up all that true. risk. Is there's no contracts? These guys ride, they get hurt, they've got no contract, they lose business, they've got to scratch scratch and claw for it back. So you know we keep that in mind. So I you know I afforded them the opportunity. They they didn't come on. But why don't you start start Mark by you know telling us the race telling us what, what brought your attention, what you saw, um, and then, you, you, you know, we'll, we'll, we'll take it from there. Sure. So I guess, uh, let, like, back, let's back up. I'm going to back up kind of macro picture here for, for a second. Sure. And uh, reiterate a few things that you just said, John, that uh, I am not the type of person that is going to attack these jockeys whatsoever. I think if you've been following me long enough, I, I put out analysis on pretty much every horse when I'm going over these things. And I am not the type of person that's going to take shots at these jockeys when they're risking their life. I know a few personally as well. I used to know even more. A few of them are retired. I have the utmost respect for these guys. Uh, the Jose Ortiz, Irad Ortiz are incredible athletes. They're very good jockeys. Uh, but I'm going to call a spade a spade. 
And that's, I think, is, is, is what needs to happen in the sport. Um, on Saturday, it was race five. It was a stakes race. Um, there was a horse named Basin, trained by Todd Pletcher, which had shown some talent. I actually had made some money on, I think, believe when it was with the Asmussen barn uh, mm-hmm. last year. It switched over to the Pletcher barn. It was an expected favorite. The Basin was supposed to be the favorite in the race. Now, there's a difference between uh, a horse, uh, you know, getting, you know, taking money and really getting bet. And this horse was getting bet. So I took note of that. Uh, I thought Basin was best in the race when I was handicapping the race. I bet Basin. I singled Basin in the early pick five on some pick threes. Uh, when the race was over, I was happy that Basin won. Like, that's what I, you know, I'm, yeah. that's what I'm here. I'm, I think that, you know, like you talk about a lot, John, that reading the tote board is a skill. You know that some of these horses, you know, trainers know when these horses are peaking, coming off of a layoff. Yeah. They're going to bet a couple of bucks. I think the ownership's going to bet some money. Trainer, jockey's going to bet some money. That's, that's all part of the game in a way. I get that. Now, when I went back and I watched the very end of the race, I think it was on the, the, the feed from Gulfstream, I noticed that the horse down on the outside that looked like it had clear run, and I bet an exacta with this horse. I bet Basin on top, and the horse was named Town Classic Number 8, who was ridden by Arad Ortiz. The winner, Basin, was on Jose Ortiz. And when they were coming down the stretch, uh, Irad was on the outside on a Safi Joseph horse named Town Classic, and he was kind of standing in the saddle. He was urging the horse along, but he wasn't fully down. Me and you, John, know is watching Irad as much as we do. He's a strong finisher. One of the best oh, yeah. in the team. He gets down on a horse. He gets into the wire. He knows when to use the left stick, the right stick. He switch leads. He is one of the best out there. And I can't take that away from him. I like Irad Ortiz. I, I've said hello yeah, you, before. You can't, I, you can't blame it on incompetence. Correct. Super I confident just thought, when I looked at it, I said, what's something going on here? I took a look at it again. I, I replayed. I pulled up the replay right away. And I took a closer look at it, and he never was really trying down out on the outside. And he was on a Safi Joseph horse who, you know, fit in the race. I thought had a chance in the race. I bet an exact cold. And that horse was dead on the board, wasn't taking any money. So reading the tea leaves real quick, I saw a Jose Ortiz horse, Todd Pletcher horse, who that Irad Ortiz rides for, get bet. Jose Ortiz didn't have the greatest meet. Okay. Uh, and I thought that he kind of let him win the race. And uh, I posted it up on Twitter and I got a response that was filled with a lot of people that are the conspiracy theorists that are out there that go, well, the Jose Ortiz, I read Ortiz brothers, they cheat. They're the cheater. They're crooks, 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 cheaters. Let me tell you something. Those two guys are fierce competitors. Those two guys want to win all of the time. But let me tell you something else. There isn't an industry out there. There is not an industry out there. You can name an industry for me. I can rebuttal you back that there's pockets of cheating that are going on. And I think that needs to be brought light to banking system. I was in for years. You want to talk about crooks? I can name a lot of them. Now there's pockets of it. You're still invested in your 401k, your IRA. You're still buying stocks and bonds. I get it. But there are some shady things that go on in pockets. I'm not saying that I read Ortiz and Jose Ortiz cheat every single race, every single, no, 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 no. They're two fierce competitors for that. But there are certain instances, and there's been a few of them now, that I feel need to be looked at a little bit closer. So when I posted the original tweet, I got a big response of people that said, you know, what else is new is the the Ortiz brothers. I don't fully believe that. I think that they do a very good job competing against each other. But there have been instances, and I've been present for a few, that they're they're not giving in 100%, I feel, in certain races I've seen it happen at the start once or twice when one horse is on, one guy's on a speed, the other guy's on a speed and one horse doesn't maybe break as well. Now, again, I can't put these guys under trial and say this guilty this you cheated, you know, ban you for life. No, 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 no. I think that there's a case to be said, but then I got rebuttals off of the tweet that I put out and I got, why is a 30%, you know, jockey that makes millions of dollars a year, not, you know, riding at hundred percent. And my, you know, my rebuttal to that was, is that, you know, making this big money on the line on a lot of these races and, you know, kind of not giving it, giving it 98% instead of hundred percent is going to matter a lot of the times. There were people that were talked about how the horse was a career second place horse. I think it had 20 second place finishes. I think that's a very fair point. I've mentioned that to a lot of people on Twitter. I said, I think that's a very fair point. I actually went back, watched the horses replay the race before. Who, who, funny enough, Jose Ortiz was on that horse. Coming around the turn, the horse was in a good spot. It was on the lead. 
And Jose sent this horse down fully in full drive into the bridle, into the saddle, three whips on the right, two on the left, one for good luck at the end. He hit the horse seven or eight times. So you can't say the horse was shy from the whip. So all of that being said, I thought that I painted the picture. You thought it was a pretty good picture. It's there. One of the last things that I did was I, I kind of, you know, retweeted it out to the major big news sources in the industry. You know, Blood Horse, Mr. Pollock, who I think does a very good job, DRF, uh, Horse Racing Nation. I just wanted somebody to say, you know, let's, let's, let's take a second look at this. What are we, what are we working with here? Is this something that we need to bring more of attention to so it doesn't happen again? Nobody responded. The only person who responded was Mr. Stead. It's having me on and let's say, let's take a closer look at this. And for my knowledge, I don't know what the other news organizations out there are doing, but I don't think anybody's going to call their agent or call IRAD or get someone on an interview, which is very easy to do. Just ask. I, I want to know what's going on here. I think it's right for the better. It's right for the public. It's right for the future of the industry. That being said, I, I, I've, I've backed off. I haven't said a word about it, but now we're lingering here Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. You know, it's, it's four or five days later. One of the biggest meets of the year is going on in Keeneland. Uh, the Ortiz brothers go ship to New York. It's going to get forgotten about. Hopefully you post this. You pick up a lot of steam on the website you do a great job with. And we, we get a little bit more attention towards this and come up with some type of a, there was the, what was really going on here. Maybe that could help us going down the line to make a sport a little bit more fair and a little bit better for like we always say about the gambler, which is the gambler is the heart and blood of the sport. Let's, let's try to clean that up a little bit. And like I said, every industry has got its pockets of something that's going on. But when something does happen, it's brought to an attention of a news source and it's looked at. If it's on CNN, Fox News, or whatever you want to call it, I think that this is something that needs to be brought attention to. So that's kind of what happened on Saturday. And now here we sit. There's, yeah. there's, there's so many interesting points in, 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 in what you said and, 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 and a lot to really – to. To, to dissect about it, and, you know, and I'll say, I'll, I'll say this, you know, and I don't say this in, a, in an accusatory way at all. I say this as, as, as a matter of fact, if you have a rider, okay, who for whatever reason doesn't want to win a particular race, it's something that's very easy for them to do and not necessarily look bad doing it. In other words, you can leave your horse too much to do or be too far back and flying late and, you know, coming to the wire, you're down, you're on your belly, you're flying, but you know you're going to be second or third because you waited that long and gave that horse so much yeah. to do that you just weren't going to get there and no one could ever question you for that. Similar to, similar to point shaving in college basketball where you can right. really disguise it well if you're doing right. it. Right. So now that's nefarious, Okay. The flip side to that is, okay, and 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 full transparency, okay. I liked Basin that day. Uh, and I used Basin and bet Basin myself. I thought he would be the favorite, and I thought he was a legitimate favorite. I actually thought he'd run better than he actually did. I didn't think it would be that tough of a race for him to win. But it turned out that it was a very tough race for him to win. And when I watched it, I didn't really watch Irad on his horse. I was just kind of gutting out the win on Basin, hoping that he somehow made it to the wire, and he did. I never realized what the ride on Town Classic looked like until I saw your post on Twitter. And then I said, wow, um, he was high. He was not really setting that horse down like he normally does when he's digging. Right. So the flip side to the nefarious point that we touched on is that you never know what a rider might feel on a horse, whether, whether they're lugging in, whether they took a bad step, whether they clipped heels, there's so much that could happen that a rider feels and knows that makes him say, Hey, you know what? I, I I'm in there and I'm trying, but I don't really want to, you know, give it all because nope. I felt some, and that's the kind of thing I think you're getting at is let's have an industry where, Stuff like that could be asked and addressed in a professional way, not by conspiracy theorists, not by those that say, oh, I ride and Jose cheat every race. They're setting each other up, you know, because we know on this show, us three, that that's not the case. OK, we see them go at each other hard often enough to know that 
these guys are professionals. They want to win. You know, I'm sure they both want to be leading rider at Saratoga. You right. Know? And ideally it's, it's addressed that day by the stewards. I mean, we, we had him, we had Umberto on the show when he was in Hong Kong. If the stewards didn't think he gave a full ride, he'd get suspended. They call you in right yeah. now. We now here, I would, I would wager that it's probably been weeks, if not months since a rider was called in at a major track for what appeared not to be a full effort. But the problem is we don't really know because our industry is not transparent about that kind of stuff. They might have called somebody in and they just don't bother letting us know. No one, no one in this game, a lot of lip service, but like, 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 like Mark said earlier, no one really looks out for the better who is the customer, okay? If we decide, you know what, we're not coming to the Kentucky Derby, we're not wagering on our ADWs, we're not tuning in, we're not betting on the first Saturday in May, all of a sudden everybody's gonna listen to us, but we never do that. We never collectively come together and demand, hey, we want things on the up and up. We want to know what the stewards discuss when they're dis- discussing, in reality, how they're going to disperse our money, okay? When there's an inquiry, those guys go in a room and privately decide who they're going to give our money to. We don't even hear what they say. We, if, we, uh, we have no say in it whatsoever. It's like going to a restaurant, ordering dinner, having them say, you know, I'd like dinner. Okay, we'll bring you whatever we want. And we'll put whatever we want on a check and you'll just pay it. Thank you. Would you oh, go okay. to that restaurant? Right. I think the most important thing that you said there was really the word transparency is that I watch, you know, Michael just talked about Hong Kong. Uh, you know, I watch enough of the Hong Kong races, Australia, around the country, in Europe, in England. When a race is over, they, the, the jockeys, you know, they, they, they give the public a, a something like what, what happened that race. It's standard practice. It's not here. And it's something that we're dealing with. There's a lot of transparency things. I was, I know I tweeted, I think it was the day before on Friday last week about veterinarian scratches. Like we're not told exactly why a horse is being a vet scratch. Is it, you, you can get a vet scratch of a, of a trainer that wanted to run in a different spot and it becomes a vet scratch. You can get a vet scratch. The horse could be unsound. I want to know that it could be a vet scratch. Maybe it was given the wrong medication or something. What, you know, in that to degree, of course, because you're trying to handicap know. the next race. Right? Yeah. I want to be able as a better to get, I want to have the information that's there. I, I don't, I, I, it needs to be better put out to the public for the gambler. Now, in this instance, the transparency of them not having to, to really take to question, getting questions about this instance, this race, it was a stakes race. It was on Florida Derby Day. It was very to the eye apparent to me, maybe not to everybody, but to me that there was not 100% effort given by Todd Pletch, by Irad Ortiz, and I'm upset about that. Now, like I also said, there is pockets of things that go on in every industry, and it's it, the industry continues to go on. But there needs to be somebody there if it's, you know, the SEC within the, the financial world, some type of rules and regulatory system there that's in place. If people want to continue to bet the dollars that they continue to bet. I know I have a friend, Pat Cummings, does a great job. And you see him on Twitter. He was in Hong Kong for a long time. You know, he's done a, a ton of things to try to get this opened up more. He took my tweet and the picture and sent it to a lot of uh, stewards all over the place uh, globally. that are getting eyeballs on it because they, they want to see, like, just showing that this is going on. Like, what do you think? Uh, I think that that's important. For those who want to see the video, you did a great job on it. Where can they see it on your Twitter feed? Can you tell everybody what your Twitter feed is so they can go and look at it? Yeah, my Twitter feed is at Giddy Up Bets. Uh, It's posted right there. It's one of the top ones. And it's a very, very, you know, it's it's kind of cut and dry for me at the same time. And it it, it shows the eighth race. I think there's a way to bring it up if you want to do it. Like, I think I can screen share if you want to go that route. If you want to do it, you can do it. Yeah. Um, there's a way. Why not? You know, and, and here's what I think. Is oh, you just able to the screen sharing. It's okay. Yeah, if you go to okay. agityupbats.com, you get a, a view of what we're talking about. Uh, it's, it's just, for me, it's very apparent of what happened. And it's something that, again, I think that it needs to be talked about. I think that, I think that there, there are people out there that will come at me and say, you know, I've, I've been hard on these guys the past couple of days. I've given them a break a lot of the times, but there's been instances, like you said, that are, that are, uh, this was, this was by far the worst. You know, I, I, I want to hear something. I need something out of somebody yeah. to give me this. Am well, I going to continue to play? Yes. I'm, I love this game. There's the, the 99.9% of the time. I feel that these jockeys list their lives do a very good job. I think that some of these guys make mistakes 
And like John, you were saying before, you don't know, maybe a horse took a bad step. Too many times people are becoming the, they cheated, they cheated, they cheated, they cheated. Yeah. No, 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 no. I saw this horse in a pocket behind horses, on horses' heels. He wasn't getting out of that spot. He's not cheating. You're an idiot. You know, right. I, I've seen horses break, stumble at the start. Oh, come that horse didn't go. Well, he stumbled at the start. You know, that's, there's a reasoning behind it. But this is a time that I think that needs to be addressed. And so far, other than you, John, I don't see anybody else taking a second look at it. Now, it, 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 interesting enough, I, I wrote an article about cheating in horse racing a couple of weeks ago, and it's a series of articles that I'm writing. And one of the things I said in the first, first of those articles was that, you know, horse racing is an, we're an easy target. You know, there's that perception that the game is crooked. It's not only up and up. There's so, so, and, and, and we all know how important perception is. We're an industry that, you know, caters to, to, to Peter on a lot of issues um, because of perception. So on the surface, we're worried about perception to people who don't play. If nothing else, that race had a bad look to the better. Why does no one in the industry we care about that perception why does nobody say you know what you know here are betters that are unhappy with uh, you know how a race and a ride look they like an explanation they're entitled to it they're spending money they're investing money in the product that we put out to promote we talk about transparency we talk about perception we're owed we're, we're owed an explanation we're owed, we're owed an, a, an answer to those kind of questions and and that just doesn't happen in the, in this sport and I think it's a big it's a big problem yeah. you know you hear everybody wants to talk about we need to attract new customers we need to attract new customers my opinion is keep- that comes second we need to first learn how to take care of first we need to re- realize who our customers are Okay, they're the betters, the gamblers. Who I, they want to stigmatize, okay, yeah. they want to stigmatize us, but but that's who the customers are. Bottom line, okay, um, owners and betters are the only two groups that put money into this game. Everybody else is taking money out of the game. We deserve a say. We deserve explanations to to, to reasonable, intelligent questions, and that's why I wanted you on because I think you posed it in that way. You weren't accusatory. You were like, "Oh, this doesn't look right. What's going on here?" I'd like to know, and I think you're entitled to know. And I you think know? that, you know, kind of my, my last point on this whole thing, which I think is just very, very fair, is that, you know, the, and I think you kind of said it too at the, at the start, you know, like we don't want, to, we're, we don't want to ruin some guy's livelihood. You know, we're not, we can't, we're not a court of law where we're just going to say this is guilty, you know, next to the guillotine. Like we're, you're, you're wrong. You're in the wrong hundred percent. Like there's, there is a, in, in horse racing, a lot of these news organizations, which some I like, some I don't, there are certain guys that I think do a very good job. There's certain, but you know, it's a very small circle and they don't want to get their kind of fingernails dirt. They don't want to get dirty. Like there's a couple guys out there that work for the DRF that would never, ever call out a couple of these guys because the, if they get shut out from, you know, that angle, there's not a lot left, you know, if you're, if you're working Gulfstream six, seven, eight months of the year and I ride Ortiz is riding down there and you need access to interviews and you want to know how he feels about a horse, you can't call him out. You know, when you're, yeah. when you're an NFL reporter and there are a million of these guys and you have 2 million followers, you know, you can, you could shake the table a little, you could shake the rock, the boat. We're in horse racing. It's a small knit place. It's a small circle, but that's got to change. We we're, we're this with the, we're out there yeah. supporting this product. And I think that these guys need to do a little better of a job of asking these questions. This was just another time where they kind of haven't. And yeah. that's, that's wrong. That's, that's not good. We're asking and we're talking about it. Oh. You know, and I'm going to go on record. I've met Irad. He's a gentleman. I like him. Um, I, I was hoping to have him on and I would ask him, you, you know, and, 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 and I believe he is the type of guy that would give us a straight, legitimate answer if, if, if he was here. And I'm, I, I give him the benefit of the doubt. I'm assuming that there's, there's you know, he had a reason right. for that and he would probably, but the industry, the game, the sport itself does nothing to facilitate and promote that. So if he didn't see your tweet, which he probably didn't. Um, or if he did, it got lost in the shuffle of a thousand other tweets. Yeah, and when it, he in won the Florida Derby way. that day. You right. know, yeah. A million people talked about him winning the Nevada Derby. Did a great job. Exactly. I won money. I liked that horse. I had him on top. I bet him to win. 
Thank you, Ira. Uh, by yeah. the way, from a little bit off the pace. So from a little right. bit off the pace, and he yeah. looked that looked a lot different. Driving, so driving the I read you looked a little different on that yeah. horse than you did right. on that classic. Yeah. And I, and I would love him here to explain explain yeah. why. No, sure. this this but way we're not going to get that. It's, it, 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 it it needs to happen. But right now, where we're sitting here on the dawn of April Fool's Day, two thousand twenty-one, we're we we I feel. You know, and I've, I've gotten this question from a lot of the members, the Giddy Up Bets members, and they're like, you know, you're, this sport, you're doing so much. I've, I've made this my, my profession now. I, I do bet for a living. I give analysis out for a living. Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're hurting my brand. I, am I hurting? How should I say this? You know, I, why am I treating this sport so well? when it kind of treats slaps me in the face like this, you know, sometimes, and yeah. you know what my answer has been, I go, you know what, I do not have the handle in certain instances in certain spots that I used to, I pick my spots much more carefully. My handle has been up the last couple of years, but there, I see these instances too often in specific races where I could kind of now like, you know, this could be a possibility if something's going on here. I'm not going to bet the race like I used to. I'm not going to do it. There are certain instances and certain tracks where I see this and I go, I, there's a lot of tracks out there. There's a lot of quality horses. There's a lot going on. I'm going to move my handle somewhere else. Now, who's that hurting in the long run? I don't know. Is it hurting me? Is it hurting that specific track on that day? Does it even matter? I don't know. It's everybody. It's, it's, that, it's, it's not it. you because it's taking opportunity. When you play for a living, which I did for many years, as you know, okay? When you play for a living, Every opportunity that you have is key. You can't afford to lose opportunities. I have people laugh. I tell a story about, um, you know, an ex-girlfriend's sister was getting married on Kentucky Derby Day, and I didn't go. And we had a big fight. We broke up. I'm like, you don't understand. I have to be focused and doing what I do. I could be there like 7.30. You know, right. no, right. The, <laughs> at 4 o'clock. I'm like, nobody gets married on that day at 4 right. o'clock. <laughs> and, and it just doesn't matter. I just can't be there. One day, what's the difference? You don't understand. I play for a living. That's the day I could win a hundred thousand. Right. To change sure. my, you know. So people don't understand that. So what you said, they say great minds think alike. I got I I have to agree with you, Mark, because I play much less than I used to play now. And and one of the main reasons for that is some issues I have with the sport. Um, some involve integrity, some involve, you, you, you know, trainers, riders, di different things I don't think are um, 100% the way that I want them to be, 100% enough to make me comfortable to invest the kind of money that I used to. And, and I don't worry about it anymore because I'm like, you know what, I'm going to have a different philosophy. I'm going to wait, I'm going to pick my spots, and I'm going to bet less and try and win more. So when I see people bet these 50 cent $800 pick five tickets. I'm like, you know what? Good luck. I hope you hit a, 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 you'll share with them. I'm going to bet a $200 pick five, $10 ticket with, you know, one by two by one by one. And I only got to hit one out of 20 right. to take you down. You know what I mean? You got to hit who knows how many, and you got to hope you hit that big one. And let me tell you, those people you said before about not knowing how to bet, and, and, and I say this all the time, and, and, and anybody ever called me out, I'd prove it in a minute. You could show me somebody's Twitter feed, and they put up all their tickets, and I could tell you right away, no shot to win, no shot to win, no, over the course of a year. Mm -hmm. Okay, just by the way they bet and structure their tickets, I know they can't come out a winner. You know, it's just, it's just not, just not, 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 not going to happen. Knowing how to bet is so important. So I... You, you know, like you and for similar reasons, I pick my spots, I bet less, my handle is so much less now than it used to be. Does the industry care? No. Um, are they going to do anything about it? Pro pro probably not. We can't stagger post times for the big stake races. You got to worry Saturday is what? The Wood Memorial, the San Diego Derby, and the Bluegrass. Two of them are going to go off at the same time, I'm sure of that. I don't know which two, but you know. All the big races, it, it's you know, I think that the point you're trying to make, the point that I'm kind of saying too, is that, you know, there aren't that many spots to really right. try to, to crack your nut and try to hit big on a specific day. Uh, when Florida Derby Day is, it's got to be a top 10 betting day for most people. Oh, to. yeah. The Derby Day is always going to be the number one day. And there are not going to be a lot of these instances that we saw on Saturday on Derby Day because all eyeballs are on it, you know, like calling us like, Calling a spade a spade here, you know, one of the tracks that I, you know, mentioned is Gulfstream Park specifically. I know John's been around longer than I have. 
but Gulfstream was a quality product in the winter on a Wednesday through Sunday scale. Gulfstream Park, I feel these days is a Saturday for me. I didn't chart biases as much as I did in the past because there's just a lot going on there that I'm not comfortable with. I'm not going to take big shots on a Thursday card nine times out of 10. There's just a lot going on there that I'm not a fan of. There's things yeah. going on there that I'm not a fan of, which I don't feel that I'm getting as much, not nearly as much at Churchill Downs, Keeneland, Santa Anita, and in Naira. It's just not it's happening. Because, because, you know, what, what the industry doesn't realize is that if they don't do things to change that perception and to convince the existing customers that, hey, we're doing everything we can to make sure nothing nefarious is going on and that you have a level, even playing field, you just need to be right. They, 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 lose, they, they, lose, they lose customers and you're never going to attract new customers if you can't hold on to the ones that you have. Really, the, the, new the way the new customers are made, it, this is just my opinion, is going to be through me. My friend, like I'm the, like, I'm attracting my friends. When my friends see me upset about something that doesn't look a little, that looks a little fishy, why are they going to start continuing to put their, their dollars in? You know, right. like, like, it's just, it's just very, it's sad to a big extent, but I think that it's important to say as well that I don't think this is some, some every race, every day issue, but it's out there. I think it's important to know. I write about it in Giddy FS. I feel like if this is a race, like, I feel that the, the tote board is can really tell you a lot of these times, some of these horses are getting bet like they can't lose and they're not losing <laughs> like a lot of the times. And I thought that the, the, the instance on Saturday in race five, which again was a stakes race, when you have a yeah. Safi Joseph horse that was dead on the board, that horse should not, it was an overlay of 10 to one. Why is it this horse taking a dollar of money? And then you've got Basin who I think, you know, like it's, you said. And Safi typically takes a lot of money at Gulfstream. Wayne, you know? When he wins. Yeah, right. absolutely. Absolutely. So I feel when you read the tea leaves of this scenario, I feel that your rebuttals to me of saying this is not, this is 100% kosher. This was, there was nothing no wrong here. I've got a, a, a bucket full of reasons of why this needs to be taken a close. This needs to be looked yeah. at on a closer scale. And again, at the end of the day, it's kind of like by who? The commissioner of horse racing? We don't there have one. Right. Who's exactly. supposed to be taking a look? The, the Gulfstream stewards, now they're gone. And then right. they suspend some of these guys. They, they take their days Wednesday through th Friday, you know, in the winter right. time and they get fined $15. Yeah. Big laundry list of things that need to be worked on. How can I and my chair affect that? I don't think I can, but I think that by bringing it to the attention of the masses, maybe, maybe having a discussion about it like you wanted to have today, John, I think maybe yeah. we're pushing the, the well, needle in the right direction. And like you said earlier, Mark, like we don't, you don't have to go out and say, Ired's just a cheater. No, no, I don't think any of us think Ired's a, a, a cheater. It's more of the fact that this looks horrible, right? Looks and I think, and I think Ired, if he was on the show and hopefully we will get him on, I think he would look at that replay and go, wow, that really does not look good. Um, and all we're asking the media to do, and, and I guess we're a small part of it, John, is we just, we just want to know what happens. You know, I read what, what happened there. It, it, it looks like this, and we just want to know what, what was in your mind. No, I, 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 I think we're, we're all in agreement on that. It's, it's a, a bad look. And, 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 you know, what we didn't touch base on, which, which I think deserves a, 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 a little mention, is that, you know, as competitive as they are, they are brothers. And Jose has, you know, had a much tougher meet than Irad has had. Hundred uh, percent. I think that has to be said. You, you, you know, said. when you say something like, uh, oh, and 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 I forget the name. It was Trevor McCarthy and Kate, Katie Davis McCarthy. Now, well, they yep. ride in the same race because they're married. Right. They have to be coupled. Right. They have to be have coupled. To, there's some right. weird rules. They they're in the same household. They have to be coupled. coupled. But Jose and I, Red Ortiz, don't have to be coupled. Right. And, and Jose, who's married to Taylor Rice, um, you, I'm, I'm sure, wrote against her when they were or when they were together. Um, you know, Linda Rice is Taylor's aunt. Uh huh. Yeah, He's I riding know. in races but, against her. I mean, so so these. Just like you said earlier, Mark, it is such a place, but, world. But yet they single they single that one out for whatever reason because of that you know old quirk quirky rule, and this. You know, legitimate question that 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 a better who's who makes his living in the sport, supports the sport, promotes the sport, and is an ambassador of the sport, asks in a professional way on social media, nobody even answers. Nobody, nobody, nobody even answers. Yeah. Nobody even answers. 
I, I actually wasn't going to bring this up, but since you brought up Katie, John, um, Mark, did you see that Katie um, uh, is essentially accusing Naira uh, of basically going to owners and saying, hey, we don't want a couple of these entries. We want more betting interests. What do you, you, you think there of that? Is, um, the, I, I did see that. I have heard that. I have some friends that are a little close to that situation there, which I fully believe the story that's coming yeah. out. Uh, what is it doing? It's lowering their handle. This yeah. is, you know, this is, like, listen, life comes down, you know, the, I always say the most important thing in life, there's two, the two most important things in life is time and information. You know, like those two things, those are the most valuable commodities in life. And the information that I'm trying, that I'm looking at here, it, it, the two plus two equals four. Naira is, their revenue is going down. It's about, not revenue, their handle is going down because uh, they're, you're only getting one betting interest, kind of pushing her aside. I feel that there's something there. Is it being talked about enough? No, but that's what we're kind of used to. That's kind of what the process has been in horse racing. And I think that as much as we're trying to give blame to these guys, to what's going out there, I think that we're all at fault as well, because you're right, John, I'm still betting on Derby day. I'm still, you know, tomorrow, uh, Aqueduct spring meet opens, Naira, Irad, Jose are going to be in the same, are going to be riding against each other. Uh, are they going to cheat tomorrow? I don't know. Have they ever cheated? I think so. Are they going to cheat tomorrow? I don't know, but am I going to put money into the, the pot? If there's something that I like and I feel it's the right situation, I'm going to make a bet. And so am I doing my, what I'm supposed to be doing and not betting this? No, maybe that's what we're supposed to be doing. I don't know, but it's not, it's, it shouldn't be on us, you know, like, it's such a tough spot, but the, you know, the problem comes back to our industry has always banked on most players are degenerates. They're going to bet no matter what we do or what we put out there. You know what I mean? And and we've never done anything to convince them. You're wrong. I wrote an article, Who Has the Power? You know? Yeah. And, and, and I wish more people read it and paid attention to it. You know? Because basically I said, all we would have to do, all we would have to do is May 1st, the Derby's May 1st this year, is get to get to, you know no. what? What is that? 20 minutes to the first race, not a dime is bet. Every racetrack executive would want to come to the table to talk with us. Everyone, we could lower takeout, we could get transfer, we yep. could get everything, yep. everything, all you got. But you know what? They bet and gamble that we won't do it, and they win every time. You know, I have a question for you, because I, I, I've been reading this a lot the past year or two. I saw it today with Turfway Park. Their handle was up like 38% this meet or something like that. Do you feel... And I, I know I'm not an expert in this at all. And I just kind of take these numbers and I say, okay, do you feel that the, the numbers at a lot of these tracks where handle is up the past year, couple of years is because of people actually betting on these things or it's the computer money that's really up, right? Like the, the, yes. the, it, the there is not 38% more retail money in the Turfway Park meet. That's, it's computer guys just gain more and more, right? That, 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 that's correct. So that's, it's like, so it's correct. like you look at it and you go, you know, what am I going to do? You know, am I not going to bet at, 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 at this track because of this scenario? I have another like, theory. Well, it, looks like, it looks like everybody's betting and everybody's yeah. betting more, but it's more of the computer money. It's like they're losing customers. So it's like, it's even worse for them that they don't even realize that they're gaining handle, but it's, it's not coming from an actual player. It's just the computer money that could go away any day. They don't care. Right. Yeah. But, 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 but they don't care. And I have another theory about handle. That's going to sound a little off the wall, but you're a hundred percent accurate with you, what you just said. A hundred percent. Okay. Um, but I have another theory about handle. It always strikes me odd. And it's been this way for as far back as I can remember. Every time there's a big day. Okay. Travis day, Whitney day, Preakness day, this day, flutter. Almost, almost nine out of 10 times you have one of those days, you see the same, same press release the next day. We broke all sources handle. We right. broke all sources handle. <laughs> there could be nobody there. They broke all sources handle. They broke right. all... So I always say to myself, who audits these numbers? Who really knows if that's true? Who knows that they're not... I mean, if Gulfstream puts out or any racetrack, Turfway Park, Yep. Uh, right. Who's Paradise doing Down, yeah. whatever the case may be, puts out a pressure. We broke all sorts. Does anybody know that? Know. Does Churchill Downs know if Gulfstream broke all sorts? Of I mean, does anybody audit that? Are those numbers in Maybe they are, but I certainly don't know it. I, think, I, I don't uh, think that I that's had, very, I don't you know? think that's off the wall at all. And I kind of say that about uh, Gulfstream when they have these, you know, mandatory payouts slash guaranteed pools. Like, 
Who's over the shoulder of the guy that's putting the mandatory guaranteed, not mandatory, but guaranteed money in these pools? I'm like, you say this guaranteed this one. I'm like, I'm like, who's the guy that's coming around with the four hundred thousand dollars satchel? You're like, all right, we're guaranteed. We got to. I want to see this money, guys. I like, right. you know, who you insured to by? Twenty percent of the pick actually, six actually, that day. They, buy, they, buy, the they actually buy insurance policies to cover that. There's that actually Lloyd's in London also oh. like yeah, they yeah. buy like a policy that if they fall oh. short. They, they they cover they cover the guarantee. They're not they're not doing it because they're not making money. But I'm just still I'm respectful. I'm like you know you're telling me that you're guaranteed a million dollars. I'm like where's this million dollars? You know I want to see I want to yeah. see this somewhere. You know but you know that's yeah, no, 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 no. listen. The horse race like the Wizard of Oz. Ignore that man behind a curtain. You know what I mean? <laughs> there you is know, you a big know, time man behind, behind the curtain. Right. You know, but that handle thing has been irking me for years, you know, like, I think, I think you know, the ones you'll see like a, a hor- you know, sometimes those big days draw horrible cards with small fields that just don't yeah. work out, you know, chalks out all the, we broke all sources handles. Yes. You yes. Know, and it, it'd be interesting to see what pools the handle, it, cause I think the computer betters are much better at the simpler bets, like the win place show pool is I, I'm guessing where most of that money's going. Obviously, the, the on the computer mandatory. better has evolved, and I've learned. I've been learning more and more about this over the past couple of years because it's it's really a massive part of what we're trying to do if we're going to try to be competitive. And I'm going to try to beat the rig here. Is that there? There is there are more detail. There is more going on there in an algorithm theory that it looks like an, a Wall Street trading desk, and they're making money off of the rebates. And there's a lot going on there, and. The reason I don't talk a lot about it is because I'm not, I, I don't want to talk about something and just kind of assume and give bad information. I don't know. But I think that my two cents on that is going to be is that it's much more complex and it's much bigger of a money maker than I think anybody really wants to know. They really knows or talks about. And it's just another thing that you kind of have to fight. But at the same time, there are times where you're getting that, that money's in the pool that you can have an advantage of, but it, it's different. This is not 1998. This isn't 1978. This isn't 2015. The way that the stock market, bond market, commodity market, horse racing is traded, the way that it, the, the, what goes through computers and algorithms today is not like it was five years ago. It was not like what it was four years ago. It's not like if anything that it was 10 years ago. I think that there needs to be a little more transparency in that as well. I think the people need to realize that. And there's good and bad sides. But it's something that needs to be realized. And at the end of the day, it's another hurdle to try to, you got to beat. When I, when I go to put my money in on a 10 to one shot with two minutes to post and I bet hundred to win and this horse goes off at six to one, that's not some crook out there that just put this huge amount of money at the end, but it's the algorithms are going off of the pick three will pays, the double will pays. They're trying to find value. They're trying to make money through the, through the handle, through the, uh, through the, uh, what do you call it? When you get the money back, oh, so rebate, yeah. the, the rebates. A lot going on, a lot going on. And it's another look that people think that people are cheating. Not necessarily the case. When a horse goes, horse is supposed to go off a six to one. I bet it at 10 thinking this value, bang, gets down down to the six, runs right. second. Oh, look at all that late money. No, if you, you need kind of have a computer program, I think DRF formulator does a decent job showing you approximately what the horse is supposed to be. I think if you bet long enough, like me and John have, you know, you see the pick three will pays and the double will pays, you have an idea of what's going to be. I've kind of created my own Excel sheet to show you a little bit better. But that's another thing that a lot of people are turned off. They're like, they're cheating here. Somebody just right. bet 20,000. Yeah, right. Well, one of my, one of my sometimes, so sometimes you, you, you know, and I'll be honest about it. I've bet horses that have clicked up a, a point of a point or two. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, wow, I'll take it. You know, it, it, it does happen. But, you know, something you said earlier um, is, is very true. And it, it used to be probably more true, but the game has changed and evolved. But years ago, um, and then, you know, one of the guys who did it was actually a cousin of mine who was a very successful better for, for many years and hardly read the form. Um, I remember one morning um, I met him at Belmont Park and my, I was with a friend of mine and my friend said, oh, well, your cousin always wins. I'm going to ask him who he likes. I'm like, yeah, he really, he's not going to tell you. He's, he doesn't have that kind of opinion. He goes, I'm asking him. I'm asking him, who do you like in, in, in the big race? And he goes, ah, I don't really know. And he, he said, see, he just fluffed me up. He said, no, he didn't. He charts. He doesn't know who he likes yet. Right. What he used to do, there was no simulcasting back then, okay? Um, he would stand under the TV monitor with a little pad, okay? And he would have all the exact numbers written down. And he'd be writing, writing, writing like a, like a fiend. Just writing, 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 oh, writing, yep. writing, writing. And he would spot like, like one number, like 
four seven or four nine. You know what I mean? And, and you just go to the window and bet hundred dollar exact at four seven four nine. And those are the exactties that were taking miss. You know, like like more money than they should have been, or enough money to catch him in his mental mind algorithm of charting. Yeah. There were yep. no computers back then. We didn't even have cell phones. This is this is before yep. beepers even. You know. So and the guy didn't read the form. Hardly, yeah. you know, he would look for a second and just have an idea of what the horse was, but he just bet off where the money was going. So take take a step back from that, right? Now think about that. What is he betting on? He's betting on they're knowing that a horse is going to run a little bit better. Maybe the horse is in a right. big four time form. Maybe the horse is going to run big today. The connections know. Maybe right. that there's something shady going on there, which we see. He was now, following the money. He doing? He's doing following the money. What, the, the bullet point number one of this conversation I would started was that Basin took extra money. Basin got bet. Yeah. Town Classic was dead on the board. Your friend who's charting in 1980, whatever. He's not just following, guy yesterday. He's who's not he's, following the money. He's following the hidden money. He's following right. the hidden money. And right. that's what these guys are trying to do. Am I, am I doing something new here? Like, no, I'm, I'm, I'm seeing that these horses are getting bet with what you say in parentheses, they knew money. And when you get a they knew money horse like we did on Saturday, who's supposed to win but who's took big time money? And then you see a brother not maybe give 100%, big red flag. Big so, red flag. So, so, you've identified so many people miss that. So, so, so many people don't really know what a, what, what, what a horse should be. One day I was walking out of Saratoga racetrack, okay, and an agent top agent, okay, was walking out next to me. You know how you all walk out past the jockey room, out into that parking lot, there's that little, mm -hmm. little pathway. And I was walking with, with a friend of mine and I was talking, I was like, you know, I knew that horse wasn't going to win. He, he just, he, wasn't, he, bet right. he wasn't bet right. He wasn't bet so right. But his agent chimes in and looks at me, he goes, what are you talking about not bet right? He was nine to five. Got it. Said, no, that he, exactly. He wasn't bet right. 100%. Nine to five is the favorite. I, you don't no. know what you're talking about. I'm like, I don't. I'm like, he should have been three to five. Never mind nine to five. When he was nine to five, I knew he had no shot. And my pick four was a tear up the ticket, you know? And this guy who was a top agent, you know, you know I'm not by name, but he had no clue. No, no clue. Okay. 100%. I knew before the race, I'm like, you know what? I'm not cashing this ticket. Tear it up, you know? No. Um, wasn't even dead. There was another horse on Saturday who I know I've had some success with, but when I soon I, when as soon as I saw the tote, I was like, this horse is winning, and it was Syaf and the stakes, and I think it was an allowance race a couple races later. Who used right. to run for Chad Brown? It went wire to wire, and the horse, you know, I did not think with the speed in the race and off the figures, I'm like, this horse shouldn't really be this big of, and he got bet big in the pick three. Uh, I say all the time, I know you've said this to me in the past, like a favorite, there can be value in a favorite and a, fa and a horse doesn't have to be live. If it's, if it's the favorite, like a horse right. I'm looking at, I'm like, this horse should be nine to five, like your example. And it's a three to five, you know, it's taking money. A horse right. that should be six to one and is 12 to one is chilly on the board. You know, like there's so many examples. That's not the best one, but it, 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 it takes, it's taken me a lot of time. And I think it's taken people, uh, they're still not, too confident in it, but I've interestingly, you and I both like known agenda on in, in the Florida Derby. I love no no known agenda, and I find out you did too. Um, and I was a little worried going into the, into the race. Like, you know, he's a little cold on the board. Definitely chilly on it was definitely chilly on the board. And you know what I said? Normally that would sway me, okay. And I would I, I would kind of pull back on my bet and I said, you know what, he's chilly on the board. But I'm going to overlook it this one time because it's the Florida Derby. I think Shug's a little over bed. I think Safi's horse is getting a little bit over bed. There's a lot of money in the pool. But, there, but there's a difference there, John. You're there. You can explain right. why. The, why right. Right. That's what he's saying. But that's what he's saying. That same. Right. But he was. But but it was a concern. It was a concern. 100%. He would have run bad and not win. I would have said, you know, nah, he was he was chilling on the board. You know. What was what was the name of the Pletcher horse in the Holy Bull? Uh, that got crushed. Uh, that lost to. I can look it up. That, that oh, I wish I could remember. I got it. Hold on. It was uh, uh, Prime Factor. Right. Okay. The Holy Prime Bull. Factor. Right. Right. You yes. Up with that tote in the Holy Bull, and you went shit. This horse right. is winning. And I kind of looked at it too, and I was like, I really liked Greatest Honor that day. I think I ended up getting close to three to one. Did right. I go in a little? I think I went in betting the race. You know, I made a decent sized bet. I made a good win bet. Uh, I had the exact a few times, but I, I could have hit it bigger 
in the Florida right. Derby because I had that same little feeling that you just mentioned that I did in the Holy Bull. I was like, you know, this prime fact is really bad here. Like, right. Curtis Waters winning this race. He's winning. Right. But, like, this horse is crushed. And right. then it was kind of the reverse in the Florida Derby. You had Fletcher right. Horse that was a little chilly. I think the greatest honor sheet numbers. The figures were so much when, faster. And, and we didn't really... Like, and we didn't really mention this, but the there are barns that love to bet when they think they're live. Hundred percent. And I would put Absolutely. the Fletcher barn in that category. I think that I think that he's definitely in that category, and I think that it's very valuable to know which ones kind of do, which ones don't, and yeah. and and sometimes 100%. it's sometimes it's I think that Giannis Sappy's one of those too. I mean, Sappy is a big time one of them, and there's yeah. and it goes to the owners too. Some owners love to bet. You know, right. like there's a, there's a couple guys in New York, Florida, all over. Like John knows a lot of the names. And are they going to be right all the time? No, but there's certain guys out there, like uh, uh, there's certain guys out there that just, they, they, they like, they love their horse. And then you're like, right. oh God, this horse is really bet. But then you're like, you know, this owner, he kind of always bets his horses. Yeah. Right. Is, it, right. is it, is it that clear cut every time? No, but you're right, John. In the Florida Derby, I think we both like that horse. And when you looked at it, there was a, an example of, you know, wow, this horse is a little chilly on the board, but he ran well. I thought second time blinkers, he ran a, I thought he was definitely for, in for a peak effort. And uh right. You know, we hit it. We hit it pretty good. So, yeah. to, so to kind of wrap up the Ortiz uh, question, you know, you've identified the problem, Mark. What would what would be your prescription? Would you couple them? Would you uh, try to have some type of jockey interviews I, after race? No, I could. I could give you a whole long list of what I think needs to be done. Right? Like, come on, let's be honest here. Who's listening to Mark DiLorenzo in his war room on a Saturday Florida Derby? You know, like, like I I can only move the needle so much. What I think needs to be done. Uh, like the, if I could just take one step in the right direction and get this looked at by the right people. And I think if the, the, the jockey uh, agents, the jockeys themselves notice that some weird ad giddy up bets, Twitter handle picked up on this and they go, you know, I don't know if your guys did exactly what you're doing, but you need to do, you need to give this, you, you need to be better. I think that's, I think that's important. You know, I, I want to see, and if not, I want you to get questioned about it. I think that in the long run, in the long term, I think that, that there, there needs to be changes. But I think at the same time, I think horse racing is in a very good place. I don't think it's in the best place in the whole world. I think that there's much less cheating today because I think that there is more transparency today than there was. But in certain instances, in certain places, in the places that I focus more, Keeneland Spring Meet, Saratoga, there's still going to be little things that are going on but not as much as Wednesday at Gulfstream, I feel. That's my personal opinion. I don't know if that's true or not. But I'm not going to bet Gulfstream on Wednesday because I've just seen a little too much going on. So I think that if you had to ask me what would be my first, like what, what, could, what would I love to see as, the, as, the, as behind this stupid tweet or just anything, it's just that these guys kind of see that like, you know, we're, we see you. We see that this is going on. I'd like an answer. And I think that being able to get transparency from the stewards is, is, is huge. It's not there. It is an interesting question that we we haven't touched on, and, and a friend of mine brought it up because he 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 said that he had heard an interview with a trainer, and I don't remember who it was, in my neighborhood, but it was a big name trainer. It was either like like Chad Brown or Shug or somebody like that. But they asked him about a horse, and he said, "Ah, last time it was uh, it might have been Wesley Ward, come to think of it, it was a hundred percent rider's fault, rider error, a hundred percent." And he was like, you know, he says that, and then he rides the guy back. And I'm like, well, they, you know, they, they do that. So my question that I'm getting at is, is, does the trainer of Pound Classic see that tweet and ask Irad what we want to ask him? So, so, so this is my answer. And again, this isn't going to maybe, you know, be the most popular answer in the whole world, but I've seen enough of Safi Joseph to know that there's something going on there. I'm sorry. I'm watching these races closer than anybody. <laughs> I think I really am. Like at the end of the day, I kind of look back and like Johnny, you said to me, and thank you for the compliments that I'm watching these replays. I've watched yeah. the replay of, the, of every horse. It's last time out, I've got the notes. I'm looking at the trainers. I'm seeing these guys. I don't, I don't think you're alone in saying that, Mark. I mean, I think a lot of people suspect. Okay, so when I see, when I see a Safi Joseph horse get bet and win, and then I see a Safi Joseph horse dead on the board with the brothers involved, I, I, the, 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 it, it checked all the boxes for me. Now, again, like I think we said at the top, and I think it's important to say, I don't want to mess with these guys' livelihoods. I don't think that that I'm I'm I, I don't think that I should. These guys should be thrown out of the business. But for my for in my chair, I think that th there's too much that went on in this specific instance for me to say that this isn't 
This was this was kind of a conspiracy theory. No, right. I've right. seen right. a little too much with certain specific guys. Well, like John mentioned, why would Wesley Ward run that guy back? Eh, you know, maybe he's got the relationships that you know, John. You know about the agent and the trainers. Really, that's the relationship. You know, these guys know when they're live. It's us to uh, up to us. You know, reading the past performances. What is it? It's of the past. We're betting on horses of what they're going to do in the future, what they're going to do an hour from now, the next day in the derby. We're, we try to do the best we can reading the past to go forward. Did a guy have a horse 100% cranked up that day? Was the training pattern different? Was Is he now going from his unlive rider to a live rider? These are all things that we've been doing since we started horse racing. This is different. I really feel that this is, this is, this is, a, this is, this was different and I'm, and I'm not proud of it, but I still, you know, I still love the sport. I'm still going after it. And like, I think I said in the beginning, every industry has got something going on. I think that it's important to when it is, is to be talked about like, you know, mortgage industry, you know, basketball point shaving, this thing's happened, oh, yeah. but they've been corrected and there's still cheaters out there. Am I going to go in and say that we're correcting? I don't, I, I don't know, but I would like someone to take a look at it and maybe get some answers from these guys before I, you know, a thousand percent say they should be, you know, they, 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 a suspension, a fine. And then you go back on that and the suspension and fines are kind of jokes anyway at the same time. So, right. you know, I'm sitting here doing what I need to do. I, I, I love the game. I, I love the, there's so much about it that I love. And, but there are certain little things that really, have, have turned me off. I think just like you said, John, by yourself. And I think this is one of them. And am I ever going to see it again? I hope not, but would it shock me? No. Right. Right. Yeah. Just, they, uh, I, I, I agree. Not, not, not enough changes to, to wrap up on a positive note. We got the three, no. big, the, the three big, uh, Derby, Derby preps, uh, coming up Saturday. I think after yeah. that, really, you got the Arkansas Derby and the Lexington left, but, yep. uh, um, as far as points races go, um, who's, who's on your radar at this point? I've got an obscure horse on my okay. radar okay. Uh, that I've been watching for a while. Uh, I still have some hope for him. I, you know, I, I will say this. I was a big fan of life is good. I yep, thought he was, was the too. fastest. Yep. Um, and I think if he didn't get hurt, they just, he were the not going to catch him. Yep. You know? yep. um, it brings, it brings the everything world. changed now. Yeah, I think it brings like I think that he, you know, like would he beat Medina Spirit in the race brought, or the race a couple weeks ago by like eight lengths? Right, right. Typical Bob ba Bob Baffert fashion. Uh, you know, I think that if you wanted to talk about Triple Crown horses, Stucky Derby horses, conversation starts and ends with Bob Baffert these days. Why? Yeah. He's getting the best prop. He he's training his horses for gate speed so they can get out there, get comfortable on the front end, and they keep on kicking. And a lot can be said about that, but that's kind of where the conversation start and end for me. We've now seen it a whole, you know, we've seen that like yeah. the ones that, that don't even really, you really wanted to start a list over the last bunch of years. You know, that some of these horses you kind of a little forget about, but how about Nadal? How right. about, you know, <laughs> you know, Authentic got lucky that the Derby got flipped to the end of the year, yeah. but Justify, American Pharaoh, like the list is like, is getting long. There was a bunch of them this year. I was against Spielberg. I didn't see that in him when it ran against uh, Life, uh, Life is Good a couple races back. Um, I think one of the, the best things that I ever learned from you, John, you know, back many years ago, not that many years ago, you know, five, six years ago or so, is that you're so, we were so right about this one comment and it was, I'm not making up my mind until I see the post draw, I see how the race is going to unfold, how the pace, the weather, because I could love some horse. Like, uh, it could be like, I love this horse. He draws the one hole on Derby Day and has no speed and there's no speed in the race. Right, what right. the frick's the difference? A hundred you know, percent, you, right. You yeah, said no. that to me and I was like, you know what? I'm going in to these days sometimes and I'm like, I really like this horse, so I got to stick to it. But no, if I see oh, a horse is speed right. by his track, this horse wants to come from off right. the pace, bop, 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 bop. Right, right. No, a hundred percent. with that. But you want to talk about the Derby preps? You want to talk about the Derby just for a couple of minutes here to kind of tail off on a positive note. I'm in, and the, you're right. There's three big races on Saturday. There's a Bluegrass at Keeneland, the Wood at Aqueduct, uh, the Sand in the Derby at Santa Anita. I have not done the full work on, on all of these horses, uh, but I think that the biggest standout, which is really going to come for no surprise, is the central quality in the Bluegrass. Great. Great. I think there's a big lack of pace in the races that I've just briefly looked at it. He has shown – some type of front foot on the pace figures I'm looking at should be forwardly placed. 
The main threat in there is going to be probably highly motivated, which I thought ran a little better than it looked. He had a trouble trip at Aqueduct last time out. Have I done the work on everybody else in that race? No, I know keep me in mind for Diodoro's drawn outside. Uh, that horse had a tough time at Oaklawn because it was missing works when they had the bad weather. Right. So he missed a lot of time going into that. What was it? The Rebel last time? Whatever his last race was. The Re so he's going to come in. He's going to track if Keelan's going to really favor his style. I'm not, I'm not saying that I'm... I'm, like, I'm just kind of pointing out a couple of things that I, when I went through briefly, I, had, I, had, I figured that we were going to do a little talking about the Kentucky Derby horses. So right. I had to come, I had to have a few bullets in my pocket here. Okay. But keep me in mind, I, I really liked on Breeders' Cup. I, I hit a few bucks with this horse underneath. On Breeders' Cup, they had a brutal trip the race prior. Uh, but if you kind of want to give that horse another look, I'm just saying is that it was based at Oakland. Oakland had all that rain and bad weather. He missed a few weeks of training. Now he's coming in in the right workout pattern. Mm -hmm. So something to take a look at there. I don't know. Is anybody in the bluegrass that you kind of stuck out to you or the no, I think, I think consensual quality is legit. I think that the dolphin may have finally bought their derby. I, I think they probably <laughs> spent a, a billion plus dollars to try and do it. Um, and it, it, it may finally, you know, you know I think they, they, have yeah, they, they just the want a few races overseas. overseas. I think they'll be okay. You know, the horse that I'm interested in, and I always try and find an obscure horse who I think is going to go forward and, and, and be peaking at the right time and, 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 and who's going to handle that mile and a quarter at, at that time of the year. There's a horse out in California, Roman Centurion, a Simon Callahan horse who's been on my radar. Uh, he, 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 you know, he kind of got thrown to the wolves after breaking his maiden, made a big move and then hung a little bit. And I'm really looking for him to go forward off that race with one run and, 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 and be solid. He's an empire maker. Um, I think out of a Bernardini, but I know he's an empire maker. And I always thought empire making never really got a good shot in the States as a stallion. And I think, you know, he had some potential. I don't know why. I don't know enough about the inner workings of the breeding business to know why yep. he was given up on so early. Um, but Roman Centurion caught my eye as a horse who's getting better under the radar, will probably like the mile and a quarter distance. And if there's, there's a lot of pace in the Derby, which it looks like there might be this year, uh, you know, might be one of the ones that's running late and and and, and could be at a, a really big number because he's under the radar. So I'm very curious to see how he does on Saturday. Um, I don't know if he has to win to get in. I, I know, was about to say, does he have the points to get in? If he I don't know. He probably has to run second. I think he has to run second. He yeah, has, and, you know, I would probably rather he ran a, a beneficial or good closing educational second than yep. jumped up and won because it'll just help the price. On Saturday, if I think he's good on the, on the first Saturday of May, if I think he's good enough. But he's the obscure horse that's on my radar. Well, you, yeah. you mentioned Empire Maker, and, you know, you're right. It hasn't gotten the, the purest shot. But, again, like yourself, I'm not 100% invested in the breed aspect of it. But I know one of my favorite horses the last 10 so years, Royal Delta's Empire Maker. And you right. know, on the female side, no one was better than her. Yeah, uh, right. But he, they just gave up on him as a sire really yeah. early, it seemed like. You yeah, know, they, they had a lot of potential. I'm looking at the horse here. They paid 550,000 for it as yearling. Uh, you know, it's got the right pedigree to go long. Callahan went long second time out at Santa Anita. And again, you know, what you, you brought up in the beginning of the, uh, the show about uh, champagne room, and this is a little different, but you know, at Santa Anita, it gets very speed biasy, especially they got the deep track out there now coming from off the pace is a challenge and two in a row. He's lost to wire to wire jobs from Bob Baffert horses, right? It'd be a different, different animal. You know, maybe if he can get in, he runs pretty good. You'd want to see a good effort out of him on Saturday, right? And yeah, then, you know, those small, fields, those small fields, wire to wire, yeah, you know. And Saturday, you know, Derby's going to get a lot of pace, a big field, you know. Should, should get a little more pace. Could I'm, get a country house trip, man. Yeah, it's definitely, definitely could be there. It's the Santa Anita Derby, I haven't looked at, you know, up and down yet. I see Medina Spirit's probably going to backdoor into being the favorite, you'd say, right? Because right. life is good as out now. Um you know, what did he do wrong other than chase around? Uh, life is good last time. It looks to me that here, it's just chase the horse around and life was good is, was the best horse out there. Uh, two back in the RB, Robert Beverly Lewis, I made a bet on this horse. Roman Jadurian was right there, dead game with him, if I recall. But this horse has got big time gate speed. So these Baffert horses break quick. They break like sprinters. They settle in the first turn. They get a breather in the second quarter. They kick on down the stretch. We can, we named a lot of them before, and these are the same, this, this is like what we're looking at on repeat. We see, we see, we've seen this kind of a show, you know, viewed before. Uh, but again, I got to take a closer look at this race. I don't really know who the speed is in there, but uh, that's probably what we're looking at. And then the wood I thought was 
you know, the New York horses forever now have been in the couple past hundred years. If they, couple they've been a couple of yeah. tough training, you know, it's just so tough. Least in dirt, like tur- I'll, I'll take a New York turf for any day, man. But uh... Uh, listen, I, I think that that's a whole big conversation that I think that you've, you've touched on something big. I think the East coast turf horses, uh, I, because of the stock, really the money that's out of here when you got the Chad, Clamont, Mott, you know, but, but the turf horses, they're, they're in, uh, they're in Florida in, in the winter, you know, the, to train as the winter, the Florida horses on the dirt, or you've probably seen a bunch of them at, at, uh, at Gulfstream run already in the threes that it, it's just so much easier with the pattern. I know, John, you talk about this a lot. Like you, you get a snowstorm up here, you get some wind. You don't want your three-year-old stud having to be in the barn for two or three weeks. Like the Deodoro horse was, right. you know, at Oakland. So, so it's tough. Um, you know, I made some money last time in the last race, uh, Wayburn is running in the Wood Memorial. Uh, I thought that horse had a pretty good shot. I ended up hitting the pick five that day for a good score. And it's a Jimmy Jurgens horse, and they always, you know, improve. And this horse, I think, could improve again. I got to right. look at sheets. I got to look at everything. That Prevalence horse, who um, why didn't Prevalence run in the in the Florida Derby? I don't know. I got to kind of look into that a little bit more. No, but... I was really high on him off his debut. Yeah. And vis- visually speaking, any and anyway, but you know, when I went back and looked at the, you know, the replay, and then looked at him in the form, and then watched his last race. I wasn't as impressed with him as I was early, and I kind of lean towards him being a pretender, believe it or not. Yeah, you know, I, I the, the figures that I'm looking at, his first time out figure was big, was was very strong yeah. for the first time started. And then what happened there? They maybe missed those, something. Did something happen? Because he, he did get sick. They, he did get sick. sick. They, they, right. they, they, so they ran they January 23rd. They, the they, backed off the, yeah. they backed off the pedal a little. They ran March 11th in then allowance. And now they're going to ship north. And for these younger horses, you know, shipping north is going to be, that's another good dolphin horse. You know, so it's, it's uh, the, you know, like I've said this a lot to a lot of the different member followers and stuff. And to you that I don't, I don't love the Derby. I, I'm not one that these horses don't oh. run enough anymore. I hate, I like it. Oh, I like man. the money. I don't love these, you know, two, three, four, five time run horses now having running its 20 and I'm going to sit there and take the big, that's why I think Baffert's done so well because the horse is going to be on the front end. It's going to be in trouble, but this is a new year. I think we're going to learn a lot at the end of this weekend. So, uh, you know, if I had to, if I had to make a derby pick, it would be probably chalky and essential quality today. Like if you told me to, but I don't bet yeah, futures. I think there's no, the same spot. Yeah. There's no time yeah. value in money in derby futures. They're not paying you to not I load do. into the gate. I'm out on all those Derby futures is just the worst for me, but you know, we'll see what happens Saturday. And then uh, first Saturday in May, you know, we'll probably see Bob Baffert win. At <laughs> three uh, yeah. yeah. I, I joke. They, 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 don't know just, yet. they should just give Bob the Derby trophy and let him decide <laughs> who he wants to give it to in the shed. You know, right, you know? I, like, I, I was real proud of myself with this tweet a bunch of weeks ago. This is before life is good. I went Kentucky Derby top 10, 2021 and then i went one through ten b-o-b-b-a-f-f-e-r-t is ten letters exactly right. that's, it. That's, hey, it. that's it that's it that's um, it hey thank you so much for coming on mark um great great having you hopefully we'll get you back on again more more stuff to talk about you can find mark at giddy up bets at twitter at giddy up bets and his website giddy up bets.com is that it that's it uh-huh. sign up there and uh you know, I send out analysis of pretty much every horse these days because I, I kind of stopped writing in the form. So right. now I have a, a Word document and I just kind of type up, you know, like little yeah. things that I see, trip, bias, whatever. After the scratches, I send you out an email that says who's on top, who do I like underneath, and I've, I've, all comes I've out the bed at the end of the day. Yeah, no, I've followed Mark for years. And if you, you know, he's, he's a good follow. <laughs> and, you know, if you want to, if you want to, if you want to lean on somebody who's, you know, is coming prepared and is open and, you know, willing to share his inside information. He's a heck of a good guy to follow and yeah. check out. I love, um, I love the name too. You didn't grab that from Seinfeld, did you? I did. Awesome. Really? I love that. Man. Yeah. I his mother was a mother. His yeah. mother was a mother. His mother right. was a mother. His mother was a mother. It's honestly, yeah. it's one of the all time great horse racing. <laughs> all time that's, like like... Not, that's not from a horse racing show. It's so 100%. Great. I, I'm a big, before Giddy Up, I'm a big Giddy Up, like, you know, coming down the stretch. I got my slap right. going. Usually yeah. you can find me with a giddy up if I'm in for a nice score, but, uh, you know. And it's funny. It's one of the few episodes. I don't think Kramer says giddy up in that episode. It's like one of the few episodes. Well, it's one of the other times probably. I well, think he, he says giddy up like, throughout like the shake. show. <laughs> yeah, he says it all the time throughout the show, but that actual where he goes to the OTB. Re- remember from that episode, he gets the horse tip 
on the subway. Yep. He yep. Right UPS, off the subway. The guy's UPS guy says yep. that he's going to win today <laughs> in the exactly. slot. Of course, loves pump, the slot. It was the pumpernickel. Horse the slot. Yeah. The slot was a mother. Yeah. The slot was a mother. Oh, All time. I love it. Give me I that love simple it. sometimes. I'm going to keep an eye out, ear out for my UPS driver to tell me a, maybe a pick for Saturday. But uh, exactly. well, you guys, thank you for having me on. Good luck this weekend. You guys do a great job. I'm always listening and watching. So uh, hopefully I'll get to talk to you soon. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Thank you, thank you so much, Mark. Uh, ciao for now, man. Ciao. I'll talk to you later. Ciao, man. Right.